Do not get drunk with cold water. Let me explain. What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I wanna share with you seven, 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 holy shit, I can never do this. Seven, seven, <laughs> seven things that people don't tell you about entrepreneurship. Because I've been living the entrepreneurial lifestyle for almost four years now. I've been running my business, Algo Expert. By the way, if you're a software engineer preparing for your coding interviews or your systems design interviews, then do check out my company, Algo Expert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. And so over the last four years, we've gone through a lot. We've achieved some level of success, you know, over 50,000 paying customers. And so I feel like I've got a little bit of insight to share and this is what I want to do in this video. Now, these aren't really going to be lessons as much as they are going to be warnings or wor words of wisdom, if you will. But either way, let's jump into them. So the first one is something that I've said in the past on this channel, but I think that it bears repeating. And it's that when you are living the entrepreneurial lifestyle, there is an incessant amount of work. There's constantly work to do no matter what you think. And trust me, you are going to think that once you reach a certain milestone, Stone. Once you launch a certain feature, you're going to be able to sit back and relax a little bit more. You won't have as much work. Not true. There's always stuff to do, always things to improve about your product or service, ways to improve internal processes. There's always, always, always more work. Now on the topic of work, this brings me to the second thing, which is something that I've recently talked about on LinkedIn and on Twitter. By the way, if you're not following me there, consider following me there. But basically the grand majority of the work that you're gonna be doing on your company, on your business, is gonna be unglamorous work. It's not gonna be super exciting stuff. You're gonna be doing a lot of unsexy work, things like filing taxes or creating accounts for products that you have to use for your business or customer service, that's a big one, or fixing little bugs here and there if you're a software engineer or if your product is a, is a tech product. All of these things are going to take up the majority of your time. There are going to be so many of them, and it's just not that exciting. If you come into entrepreneurship, especially if you're someone who's going to be maybe the CEO of your company like I am, if you come in thinking, oh, I'm going to be you know, Jeff Bezos and I'm going to be doing super cool things every day, you know, it's just not going to be like that. You have to get ready to do a lot of dirty work, so to speak. Nothing will be beneath you. Nothing should be beneath you. Now, this brings me to point number three, because some of you might be thinking, well, if there's so much unglamorous work, why don't you delegate that work? Right, delegate it out to other people, hire other people to do the work. And I think that this is a very common misconception. Don't get me wrong, delegation is important, especially as you're growing a company. But I think that delegation, or rather how easy it is to delegate, is very, very often overestimated. In other words, people think that it is far easier to delegate than it actually is. And then the benefits of delegation are oftentimes also overestimated. Because if you think about it, when you're delegating a task, that is gonna come with some sort of upfront cost. You're gonna to have to find the person to delegate the task to. That takes a lot of time. You can't make a wrong hiring decision or you can't find the wrong person. Otherwise, it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg down the road. But then you have to train the person. You have to make sure that they're able to do the task without needing too much of your help. You have to make sure that they can do the task competently. And so oftentimes, there's so much overhead and so much upfront operational cost and even down the line operational cost that the delegation doesn't actually serve a purpose. And I think that this is also something that a lot of companies mess up. A lot of companies will start to delegate way too fast, way too quickly. They'll delegate things that they really don't need to delegate, even though, yes, it's annoying to do. They'll delegate, you know, 10 different things. And then they've got 10 new people working at the company who don't have enough work to do, or some of them have some work, but they end up coming back to you, you know, the, the person who created the company, asking for your help or your guidance. And it's just not good. So the point here is that you know, delegation, oftentimes not the answer from my experience. Now, the fourth thing is that there will be a lot of highs and lows throughout 
your entrepreneurial journey, and you will feel those highs and those lows very, very strongly. The best way that I can explain this is when you are working at a company as a normal employee, like for example, back when I worked at Google or at Facebook, your life or your level of excitement at the company tends to be kind of stable. In other words, you know, you have a stable paycheck, you have a stable job, maybe you get promoted, you know, once a year or once every two years and you have a bit of excitement there. But overall, it's not like every week or every month or even every day you get like different levels of, you know, really high excitement and really low excitement. Whereas when you're running a business, Every day, every week, every month, every quarter, you're seeing firsthand things like revenue, sales, other metrics, traffic on your website, all these types of things, and it affects directly your livelihood. It's not like when you're at a company getting your paycheck every week. Here, you have a great day of your business. You know, Maybe you have a, a record day in revenue, and you're going to be super excited. But then you have like three bad days that keep going down or even worse, you know, bad weeks or bad months. And that can take like a big toll on you because you're kind of like, what are we doing wrong? Like, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Not maybe, probably because I'm responsible for, for this basically entirely, right? So these highs and lows are just far more pronounced and you have to be ready for that. Now, the fifth thing is actually related to the previous one, specifically to the highs, and it has to do with this proverb or saying that my father used to tell me when I was younger. I love this proverb. It goes like this. Do not get drunk with cold water. Let me explain. When you're running a business, you will inevitably, or at least hopefully, reach certain milestones of success. Like for example, you will have a record month in sales or maybe a record day in sales, something that blows every other month or day out of the water. You're gonna be super excited. You're gonna feel on top of the world. You are gonna be drunk with happiness, excitement, ego, a feeling of invincibility. And the truth is oftentimes, especially when these excitements or peaks are very short term, like they're caused by something very acute, like a day, a record day of sales, you're getting drunk with cold water. In other words, you're not getting drunk with you know, hardcore vodka or whatever the top tier alcohol is. I'm not a big drinker, but um, like, you know, you're getting drunk out of nothing. You're, you're getting drunk for no reason. It's not good. And you might be setting yourself up either for disappointment or to no longer work as hard because you think that you've made it, but you really haven't. And then down the road, you're gonna to start to see your daily sales go down and you're gonna wonder, you know, what happened to that one day that was amazing? So the point is, do not get drunk with cold water. Even after you have great successes, it doesn't mean that you should not appreciate them or not be happy about them, but you still gotta put in the work. You still gotta operate with that fire under you, that sense of urgency, and so on and so forth. The sixth thing has to do with your teammates, specifically your co-founders or your founding team, the people with whom you're working day in and day out. And the thing that I wanna share here is that your relationship or your relationships with these people are gonna be very much tried and tested. Because if you think about it, when you are running a business, your co-founder or your co-founder's founding team, you're gonna be working with them all the time, over a long span of time. And you know, there's a saying, or I don't know if it's a saying, but a lot of people in the entrepreneurial world say that your co-founders are kind of like you know, your spouses in a different capacity, obviously, but I think that it's very, it's very true because you are operating in a very stressful environment 24 seven or almost. And so you see a very different, you know, version of a person in these kinds of circumstances and your relationship is going to be put to the test. So I'm really happy that, you know, on Algo Expert, we've got really good relationships between all of the people on the founding team, you know, me and my co-founder, and then you know, the rest of our executive team, two other people with whom, you know, we all, we're, we're all talking, you know, 24 seven, but like there have been times when we've had a you know, borderline, like, fights, you know, that come out of like big disagreements, intense disagreements, or just like, you know, 
I don't know, all sorts of things. They've gone through rough times for the business and high times for the business, right? The highs and the lows. And just like, you got to be ready for that. So that's why I think that it's very important when you're looking for a co-founder or for co-founders to really think like, am I going to be able to have or be with this person for a long period of time every single day? Like, is this going to work out? Do we have a level of trust, of respect that will survive these circumstances? The seventh and last thing that I want to tell you here, hopefully we'll end the video on a lighter note because I realized that the first six things were kind of you know, negative. But the seventh thing is that no matter what anybody might tell you, because a lot of people will actually try to discourage you to get into entrepreneurship because they'll tell you things like it's really stressful, which is kind of true, or they'll tell you things like most startups fail or it's going to be really unstable, uncertain. And all of these things are true. All of the six things that I said previously were true. And like I said, they're kind of negative. But despite all of that, despite all of that, it's worth it. If you are someone who's watching this video and who's kind of unfazed by the first six things that I said, who's kind of like borderline motivated, like, yeah, this still appeals to me, the idea of running my own business and entrepreneurship, then you know, believe me when I say it, it is worth it. It's worth it. It's still like an amazing thing. I would not you know, want to do anything else. It's super rewarding. And yeah, just go do it. On that note, I hope that you found this video insightful. If you did, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. Instagram if you like pictures, and I will see you in the next video.